We as Americans, we uh, support uh, freedom and democracy and the rights of all peoples. But as Gaza, as Gaza taught us in 2006, free elections by themselves do not make up a democracy. There are times when people are offered a chance to elect party leaders that offer them only one election to affirm a dictatorship. We can also learn from the year 1938 uh, that the dangers of ignoring developments abroad are huge. Now in the wake of the Arab Spring, we turn away from that region at our own peril. Now on November 28th, the first stage of the Egyptian elections began, which will inaugurate a new electoral system forming a bicameral legislature. This first stage determines about 30% of 498 seats for the government's lower chamber called the People's Assembly. Before Egyptians arrived at the polls, protesters filled Tahrir Square in Cairo, and as a result, over 40 Egyptians were killed. Many are objecting to the military's interference in the electoral process and the decision to force elections well before secular parties had a time to build their capacities. According to public polling and sources on the ground, this will likely hand an electoral victory to the Muslim Brotherhood and more radical Islamic elements within Egyptian society. Although elections will last until March of 2012, the prediction of a Muslim Brotherhood victory is already becoming a reality. Early data shows an alarming trend of Islamist domination of the Egyptian parliament. On December 5th, the High Electoral Commission announced that leaders of the Freedom and Justice Party that's the political arm of the Muslim Brotherhood, had received a plurality of 36% of the vote, while the secular Egyptian bloc had gained less than 12%. When we include the runoff elections, which took place last week, it appears that the Muslim Brotherhood has won 73 out of 150 seats or 49% of the currently contested outcomes. This is the same party that led a pre-election rally of 5,000 chanting, quote, one day we shall kill all the Jews. And another quote, Tel Aviv, Tel Aviv, judgment day is coming. While many expected the Brotherhood to do well, there were other surprises. Salafist parties, made up of anti-Western hardliners who follow a particularly radical version of Islam are also faring particularly well. Surpassing predictions, they received 24% of the vote in the first round. Importantly, these elections also included so-called liberal districts of Cairo and the Mediterranean port city of Alexandria. The weakness of liberal parties namely their inability to reach out to voters effectively with a serious agenda is now fully exposed. Islamists are taking full advantage of deeply rooted networks that extend from the mosques into Egypt's, into Egypt's poor districts and their grip in the traditionally conservative areas of Alexandria proved particularly tight and these areas are also home to a majority of the Coptic Christian community. It's clear that if Islamist parties and candidates uh, continue uh, their currently won gains in other elections, they will capture 60% of the national vote in Egypt. This will situate the new Egyptian parliament around deep ideological differences between Salafis and the Muslim Brotherhood and liberal groups, making the Brotherhood the power brokers between Egyptian left and right. Now, what does this all mean? By January, the United States could face an Egypt defined by a hatred of Israel and many of the freedoms we hold dear, a freedom of expression, of women's rights, the right to practice any religion. This Egypt counts Iran as a friend and poses a threat to the Camp David peace accords, which have served as the cornerstone for Egypt's strategic position for 30 years. 
Do we expect that an Islamist-led Egypt will prevent weapons from arriving in the hands of Hamas? Will an Islamist-led Egypt help preserve a free South Sudan? Will an Islamist-led Egypt act to protect Coptic Christians who make up about 10% of Egypt? Or will we see continued violences like we saw on October 9th in Mazapro, which killed 27 civilians and injured hundreds? Will an Islamist-led Egypt do what we expect with more than $1 billion of U.S. foreign assistance? Will they continue to share intelligence and to work against terrorism? These are all questions that may become critical issues for the national security of the United States very shortly. All of this instability prevents foreign investment and tourism that would help the Egyptian economy. The IMF has forecasted a little over 1% growth for the Egyptian economy next year. They said inflation will atop 11%, while almost 12% of Egyptians will be out of work. Recently, the Egyptian pound traded at its lowest level against the dollar in seven years. This time last year, the region was on the threshold of exciting change, but today Egypt sits instead on the threshold of a very dangerous path. The United States, and especially our State Department in particular, should do what it can to keep Egypt attached to peace and good relations with the West. The United States is now on the verge of a historic defeat and reversal of American interests in Egypt. Currently, if there is an Obama administration plan for handling a new Islamist Egypt that rejects peace with Israel and allies with Iran, I don't know it. And I don't know if anyone does. We must keep our finger on the pulse of this process. Liberal voices in Egypt must work to preserve the democratic goals of the January Revolution. Recently, I had the privilege of meeting some of Egypt's best and brightest young liberal leaders. They'd like to build a free Egypt that respects women's rights and religious minorities and the rule of law. I was encouraged in meeting with them, but only hope that the coming election is not like a, a 1930s election in Germany, where people in Egypt are given one choice to affirm a dictatorship, and then that is the end. If a radical Islamic government rises in Egypt, one that disavows the Camp David peace accords and no longer acts as a stable strategic partner in the Middle East, then we will look back on the recent election in Egypt and its successors in December and January as the turning point for a historic reversal of the United States. My hope is that the State Department watches this very carefully. My hope is that we have a plan to make sure this critical country stays within the U.S. orbit. But my fear is, given the recent elections in Egypt, uh, we have already lost quite a bit of ground. And if current trends continue, uh, then by the middle of next year, we will have a Muslim Brotherhood government in command of the Suez Canal, uh, in charge of Cairo, the second center of learning in the Arab world, along the border of our Israeli allies, friendly to Hamas, friendly to Iran, and hostile to Europe and the United States. And my hope is, over the holidays, we work very hard and diligently uh, with our allies and especially liberal forces in Egypt to make sure that that reversal doesn't happen. And with that, Mr. President, I yield back.